Yeah, I guess the positive thing is it's not fractured. Uh, when I saw him go down and, and the pain he was in, uh, I thought it was either fractured or dislocated. And, and uh, it was just, a, it's a bad sprain. Uh, I, I actually talked to him last night and uh, he, he felt that he did some walking in the water uh, and he can put his foot down and he wanted to go on the trip. So, um, you know, so I guess that part positive, but it, it looks like he's, I would say a minimum 10 days to two weeks, if not. And, and again, I, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes uh, with that. And then Davion has a hip issue and um, that's why he didn't start the other day and played minimal minutes and took himself out. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping by tomorrow it'll be a little better, but he, he was, he was probably half a practice yesterday. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Thanks coach. Uh, we'll start off with questions. Uh, go ahead, Kellis. Hey Bruce, uh, obviously Mike gets the chance here to presumably go back in the starting lineup and help you guys a little bit. What's the biggest challenge you're going to have for him in these games without selling? Well, I, you know, you feel good about him. And obviously he had missed some time and he had come back and played really well in those, um, you know, the Texas Tech and, and the Texas game uh, was really positive. The, um, you know, in the Kansas game, you know, I, I think Nigel and Marquise were doing so much. He just didn't get a lot of opportunities. Uh, and, and then, you know, crazy, he, he had unbelievable, had a couple of really good practices for us. Uh, uh, as of late, just making shots, um, you know, I thought Baylor, he, the first one he took was a little quick. We, we shot too many threes early against them. Um, and, and then, you know, but I thought he settled in and he had some nice drives and did some nice things for us. So, you know, he's a veteran player. He's been through it. This is his chance. Um, you know, I, I told him the other night late when we got back, you know, I just said, this is your chance to, um, you know, really leave some kind of legacy. This, you know, it's up to you to really uh, step forward and, and help us. He's, like I say, he's back and he's had some practices and feel a lot more confident. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I hope he has a great positive finish of his career. I don't think it's any surprise that you guys are undefeated when he scores double digits. When, when he's playing, you know, within himself like that, what, what, What's the key to his success? I think some of it, we got to find him. And, and, you know, I think, uh, you know, when we move the basketball, which we did against Texas Tech, Texas, and, and keep playing basketball and, and keep that ball moving, that allows, you know, somebody beside Nigel and Marquise to, to make some plays. And they can't and, – and teams are focusing on those two guys also. So, um, but, you know – all along, we've always talked to him about being efficient, and those two games, they were two of his better efficient games. And I think, you know, coming off of COVID, not practicing, uh, you know, I, I just said, be simple, be make simple basketball plays, and he did. And I think that's what that you know that's what he has to do to be successful. And obviously, it would help, uh, you know, either of the last two games. You know, if we would have got something out of some other guys, it would have definitely helped. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Travel safe. Uh, next question to Michael. Yeah, Bruce, you feel like you got a pretty good matchup with an Ole Miss team that uh, relies on its backcourt and is is missing Joiner for one thing. Yeah, I mean they, you know, they are. I think the first thing Coach Henderson on the radio last night, he was with uh, on our uh, radio show and told why the you know first word that comes out the other, you know, with the scout is talented. You know, they, they, they are talented. They have a lot of good athletes. They have some, um, you know, guys that can make plays. Obviously, Ruffin, uh, Morrell, uh, you know, those are guys that can really make plays. They have guys, you know, guy that's been at Duke. They have guys that have, you know, transferred. So these are experienced guys. Uh, you know, they had, they had a setback, they lost, you know, lost a couple guys uh, to injuries. And, um, you know, I think they, it took them a few games to kind of recover, but if, you know, if you watch, they're, you know, they did obviously just beat Florida soundly, um, you know, got Mississippi State the first time, Mississippi State got them the second time in their big rival game. Uh, you know, they, Auburn game, they're up double digits in the second half and Auburn has to push it. They take Tennessee on the road to overtime. So, 
Uh, they, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tough matchup. They, they got talent, they switch defenses. Um, I think that'll be a key for us to, you know, our defense has to be really sound when Missouri beat them. And I think that was right when they had lost some guys and they were probably trying to figure out a new identity. Missouri's defense was really sound and that didn't, that kept them from changing defenses on the other end. So, uh, you know, that, I think our, you know, our defense probably was, I, I thought Tuesday was the worst it's been all year. And I, and again, I'm not exactly sure why credit maybe a little bit to Baylor because they're really good, but uh, we were just a step behind and, and we got to pick that up uh, and, and do a great job of, of, of defending. And, and, you know, so that'll allow us to get some transition, allow us to not let, let them change defenses and attack their man defense. How much growth have you seen in Nigel Pack's game in basically a year and a half? Oh, I, I, I mean, he was last year, you know, he was a, a really good player, a solid player. I didn't think he got enough credit. Uh, you know, I guess part of it, we were so, we struggled in so many games with all the, you know, with the youth and all the things we went through, um, you know, but the, the big thing we've really tried to work on in the summer, spring, summer, fall was, you know, creating off the dribble to, you know, being more confident, taking people. And he's done that. I mean, it, it, there's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, Marquise has kind of taken some of his playmaking away, but I, I've told Nigel at times, you know, when they lock into him or do a great job and, you know, ball screens with him involved, um, we still need him to create for us and, and, and get some assists. I think that um, it, it would help us. I think it's the one thing. And even uh, defensively, He's made strides. I, I know we put him on Obaji, and I know he scored a bunch, but I thought he really made him earn things. Um, he's probably our best guy at chasing people, um, and 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 he's also very good on the scout part of it. The you know understanding what the other team is doing and taking their options away. And how much has he made the step back a real weapon for him? Yeah, and that's what we worked on. I think you know last it was the first thing in the spring I really talked to him about, you know, cause he, we got to end the shot clocks and, you know, you got to make a play. And, and he, he, you know, I think that we had gone against Baylor so many times last year and, and those guys, we, we talked a lot about them. Um, you know, Hey, these guys are really good players. This is what they did. You know, you get to the end of the shot clock, you get, you get switches. You got to be confident to go make that play. And, and he's, he's, you know, he's feeling better about himself. He was disappointed the other night. Um, I know our whole team was, uh, you know, I told everyone stay out of the gym on Wednesday. I, I actually came back late because I had to get some, uh, get, get another tape and, and watch another game. And, uh, and he was in shooting. So, you know, I, I think he, you know, he's pretty driven to be successful. And that's part of his, uh, what, why he's had the success he's had. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Uh, Landon, you're up next. Uh, Coach, obviously the Ole Miss game isn't a throwaway game. It's still a tough game, but is it nice to step away from the gauntlet that the Big 12 has been this season? Well, I hope so. We'll see. It's, uh, you know, we told them yesterday, it's, you know, they actually, they had a game Wednesday night. So um, I, I don't know if they had their, and they had a game Monday. So their day off is probably yesterday. So you got two teams that, probably don't know each other quite as well as you, you know, everyone in the league. Um, but it's still, it's, it's a huge game for us. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, and we're on the road, so that even makes it tougher. And, uh, but it, it's, it's, it's important. And, uh, you know, I, obviously the SEC, I, I love the challenge. I've always said, I don't want it in the middle of January, but, um, hopefully, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is a chance for us to uh, take a step as a team and uh, get off to a, you know, have a, have a good game, get a road win and, and, and lead us into a good, uh, good, strong finish to our season. Thank you, coach. Is there a, go ahead, Grant. Hey coach. Um, you know, I know you said after that Baylor game, there was a emotional hangover after the Kansas loss. I'm just wondering how the spirits of the team is right now. You know, I, I, I hope good. 
you know, we did have the program that the group that we dealt with that put us through some of that, uh, you know, training in the fall, we had them zoom with us. They actually reached out to us and said they wanted to, you know, kind of re get back with the guys. They've been staying in touch with them. Um, I, I thought that session went well yesterday. I, we stayed out of it, the coaches, but just, I let them give me the feedback, the players, um, you know, I, we, we didn't even talk about the Baylor game one. We didn't even bring it up to them. I mean, it, it's, it's done and over with. You can't change it. They got our butts kicked. Now we got it. It's all got to be positive. And, you know, I said on the radio with Wyatt last night, I had a glass of water in front of me and I had drank part of it. And I said, you, you, you got to look at it. You know, you decide, is it half empty or half full? And, and we, you know, we got to look at half full and, and uh, be positive with them, help them emotionally. Uh, I think we've proven when we're all together, we're a pretty good team. When we move the basketball, we guard. Um, obviously, rebounding at times can be a, a, a struggle, but at other times, it's been pretty good. So um, we just got to figure out how to put it all together here and have a great finish. And then uh, who are you keying in on um, for the Rebels? Well, obviously, Ruffin is a, a talented guy. Uh, Morrell can really score the basketball. Um, I, I think a big key is not letting those other guys, somebody else, go off and have a, a huge game. Uh, that, that To me, that might be the most important thing. All right. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Any other media questions before I hand this over to the ESPNU crew? Okay. Thanks, guys. Hold on, guys.